I had a lady the other day ask me to specifically do this video. Now that we're getting into the summertime, we're seeing homeowners turn on their air conditioning for the first time this year. And what are some tips that I could give you for specifically the summertime when it comes to HVAC systems. I'm gonna give you five tips that are specific to the summertime, giving you tips for HVAC. I think if you stick around to the fifth one, you'll find out that I'm going to give you probably the most controversial tip, a lot of heating and air guys that might not agree with me. But let me do this. If you do me a favor, if you subscribe and like this video, in return, I will do my best to reply to every comment left on this video. So let's dive into it my five tips when it comes to HVAC here in the summertime. Number one, I think you should be taking advantage of smart thermostats and a lot of the technology that they offer. One of those features that a lot of thermostats have is running a schedule. And I know what a lot of heating and air guys will say. They'll say a lot of folks don't realize they're actually using more energy. They're causing more wear and tear. And I would actually argue that is probably true for the winter time, especially if you have a system that is staged. You got a system that maybe it's got dual fuel technology or maybe a backup heat source and you're running a schedule, it's got a reach temperature, and it's then going to turn on the backup heat or switch to emergency heat, auxiliary heat, whatever verbiage you want to use. And if you've got thermostats that are now trying to reach temperature in the winter time, you've got it in heat mode, and now it's got to work extra hard. It's going to consume more energy to reach temperature. I think it could be argued that it's counterintuitive trying to run a schedule, that you might actually not save any money or possibly use more energy doing things like that. However, my opinion is the summertime is different. If you've got a heating and air system that's sized properly, that's working like it should, and you are running a schedule, you tell that thermostat, hey, every day I get home at say 6 p.m. and I want it to be at this temperature when I get home. During the day, I'm okay if it gets a little warm in here and I want to run a schedule to save money. I think it could be argued that that system, if again, if that system is working the way it should, I know it's at the end of the day. I know it's after the hottest part of the day, but you still should, especially if that thermostat has something called recovery in there. Honeywell calls it adaptive intelligent recovery. Some of the other thermostats call it different things, smart recovery, whatever. But if that thermostat can learn how much time it needs to turn on the air conditioning to reach temperature, that's recovery. And then again, you should be able to save some energy doing it that way. I'm not saying you're going to save hundreds, but you should be able to save some energy. A lot of smart thermostats today have all kinds of technologies, technologies like geofencing, proximity, again, recovery. All these technologies are meant to help that thermostat save you money, but while still keeping you comfortable. In fact, if you click some of the recommended products in this video, I'm going to link some of my favorite thermostats that I think you should maybe check out. But when you take a technology, say like geofencing, and that thermostat can see that you're getting closer to home, that you're on your way home, and now it needs to bring on the air conditioning, it's been able to save you money when you're not at home. And as time goes on with AI and some of the other things, I think that AI specifically is going to affect thermostats probably more than anything else in our industry as we move forward, at least in the short term, I think you'll see some cool technologies come out with thermostats before anything else. Moving on to the second tip that I would give you, and that is maintenance. If you are not having that system maintained like you should, if you're not getting that spring tune up that a lot of HVAC contractors recommend, I would recommend you think about that. Take a look at getting that system maintained, getting what we used to call at my company a proper tune up. Now that it's summertime, let's get those drains flowing cleared and treated so that they're flowing like they should get those coils cleaned and get that system just made to be as new as possible. Again, making that system be able to run as efficient as possible, making sure the refrigerant level is dialed in perfectly. The air flows good all that, you should have fewer breakdowns and you should be able to save money on your utility bills because you're having a system that's operating the way it's meant to. I don't know what the statistic is, but I would bet that a lot of breakdowns that we would get on service calls could be correlated directly with poor maintenance. Don't just think, oh, well, now we're in the summertime. It's probably too late. It's not too late. I would say, let's get on that. Let's have that system maintained. 
You might pay a couple bucks more now that heating and air guys are getting busy. I don't know. It still should be done. My third tip would be have the ductwork inspected. One of the biggest energy wasters when it comes to your HVAC system is ductwork that's leaking. And I think there's something to be said for inspecting it, making sure everything's still secure. There's no critters that have damaged it and things like that. But one of the coolest technologies I've seen when it comes to sealing ductwork is from the company that sponsored this video. And that is AeroSeal. Well, the cool thing about AeroSeal is if you've got ductwork that say in walls, you're not gonna be tearing open walls and making sure everything is sealed up well. AeroSeal can seal that ductwork from the inside out. The cool thing about all that is they will test your ductwork, see how badly leaking it is. Then they'll install the product again from the inside out, and then they will test the ductwork again to make sure that you're getting what you're paying for. Customers have reported a significant savings on their utility bills after having AeroSeal installed. And because ductwork leaking is one of the biggest energy wasters, I think it's a good idea for you to attack that head on. Now that it's summertime, let's get that ductwork straight so you're not having higher utility bills than you should, and that system should operate better, should reach temperature better having that system installed. I'm gonna put a link down in the description of this video if AeroSeal sounds like something that you'd like to check out. Go to their website, you'll be able to link up with a contractor in your area that specializes with it. And if they don't have a contractor in your area, they've got some other tools in place that they can then get a contractor in your area, get somebody set up to where they can take good care of you. Let's get in front of this problem. If you've got ductwork that's leaking, let's take care of that. Let's get those utility bills lower and that system operating better. Number four plays on top of that, and that is airflow. If we're not talking about the ductwork that's leaking, right, and it's letting that cool air go, you know, wherever in the walls or attic or wherever, but in addition to problems like that, one of the things I see homeowners do themselves, maybe unbeknownst to them, is they create airflow issues themselves. And so things like not replacing their air filter as often as they should, right? That's probably the most common one that we see. Not having that system maintained like it should, and you've got coils that are dirty, not allowing good airflow or heat transfer. But we also see homeowners that will do things like covering the floor vents, right? They'll put a rug or a piece of furniture over that vent. They'll maybe block the return with something, maybe a couch or a table. And so we're not just talking about the supply ducts. We're also talking about the return. That needs to be good and clear so that way air can be pulled in. It might be the most common thing that I see that homeowners do that is unbeknownst to them causing Again, that system to work harder, possibly more breakdowns, possibly that system to work harder to reach temperature and maybe even not reach temperature over time. Airflow is a biggie. Let's see if that taken care of. And then finally, number five is taking advantage of today's technologies. And again, I said at the beginning of this video, this would be a controversial one. A lot of heating and air guys yeah, I would say maybe if we had this conversation five years ago, it was like 80, 20, if not 90, 10, where 90% of the heating and air guys weren't on board with this stuff. And now as time has gone on and they've dipped their toe and they've laid hands on some of this higher seer equipment and they see how well it works and they have homeowners that report much lower utility bills, we're now seeing maybe a little bit of a shift. We're seeing maybe half and half or maybe even 60, 40, 60% 60 of those guys saying, yeah, maybe we do recommend higher seer equipment, inverter technology, communicating technology. I've seen probably just in the last couple of years, more of a shift in that direction because of the cool products that are being offered today. I would just encourage you, if you are a homeowner, it's now summertime, it's hot, maybe your system's not reaching temperature, maybe you've got a system that's got some age on it and it hasn't broken down yet, so you're not looking to replace it right away, but if you do start looking in that direction, I would encourage you, especially if you're gonna be staying in that house for a while to where the savings on the utility bills can then pay for itself, going with a higher end system, I would encourage you to look at some of the technologies today. Technologies like heat pumps being able to work in certain environments that it couldn't before, being able to run air conditioning and heating with that same unit, other technologies, like I said, communicating technology where systems can literally talk to one another. We're seeing all kinds of cool products come out with communicating technologies today. And then finally, 
inverter systems, systems that can ramp down and barely be running on some days and still keeping your house warm or cool, depending on what season it is. So that's my five summertime tips. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. I appreciate all the support that you guys have been giving me lately. I just wholeheartedly really appreciate it. These videos do take quite a bit of work and you know, it's just nice having some support there. So thank you for that. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where I give you three HVAC tips that I would give my own mother. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.